You there. What comes to mind when I say the word alcohol? I bet the first thing that comes to your mind with all this talk of COVID over the last while is... Isopropyl alcohol, one of the most common ingredients in hand sanitizer. But did you know that alcohols actually make up a huge group of organic molecules, some of which are essential to your survival? But what actually is an alcohol? Let's find out on... Science with Thomas! Part 1. What is an alcohol? Alcohols are organic molecules that have one or more OH, or hydroxyl groups, present in them where an oxygen is directly bound to a hydrogen, and that same oxygen is also bound to one of the carbons in the organic molecule. The oxygen also needs to have two pairs of lone electrons to have a full octet. So as an example, this molecule here is an alcohol because there is at least one, in this case exactly one, hydroxyl group present, and because it's an organic molecule filled with carbons. Alcohols are classified into three categories primary, secondary, and tertiary. Based on the number of carbons, the carbon with the hydroxyl group is covalently bound to. So this alcohol here is a primary alcohol because this carbon with the hydroxyl group is only bound to one other carbon. A secondary alcohol, like this one, has two carbons bound to this carbon. And what is a tertiary alcohol? You guessed it, it has three carbons bound to this carbon. So going back to our example from earlier, what class of alcohol is this? That's right, it's a secondary alcohol, because here's our hydroxyl group, and this carbon here is bound to two other carbons. But you must be wondering now, what is the name of this compound? Part 2. Naming Alcohols Now like other organic molecules, we're going to start by identifying the longest chain of carbons in this molecule, and then choosing an appropriate route. Now in this case, we have three carbons in the longest chain, and so we're going to choose the root prop. And now we're going to add the A-N-E ending to it because we have only single bonds present, leaving us with propane. Next, the key part in naming an alcohol is we take off the E at the end of the name, and then we replace it with O-L. Think of the word alcohol. It ends with that O-L ending, and so that would leave us with propanol. Now the last step in naming this is we need to identify where the OH group is along the parent chain. So no matter which end you start from in this case, the OH group, the hydroxyl group, is located on the second carbon in the chain. And so we're going to add a 2 and then a dash in front of the propanol, giving us the name of this compound, 2-propanol. Now interestingly, the common name for 2-propanol is isopropyl alcohol, what we were talking about at the beginning of this video. And so, that's the stuff you've been putting on your hands this whole time. So now let's try this process in reverse. If we're given the name of an alcohol, let's try to draw it. Part 3. Draw, 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 drawing alcohols. So let's consider 3-ethyl-2-hexanol. Now we can see the OL ending characteristic of an alcohol, so we know there's going to be a hydroxyl group somewhere in the compound. And we can also see the hex root, indicating a six-carbon parent chain. So let's go ahead and start off by drawing that in. Next, we can also see that there's an ethyl group, or two carbons, branching off of the third carbon in the chain. So let's go ahead and add those in now. And so now we need to ask ourselves, well, we know that it's an alcohol because we have an OL ending. So where does that alcohol group go? Well, we can see the 2 in front of the hexanol. And so that indicates to us that the hydroxyl group is on the second carbon in the chain. And so all that we need to do now is add in the remaining hydrogens to make sure that every carbon has four bonds in total. And there we have the expanded structural diagram for 3-ethyl-2-hexanol. Now, if we want to make these diagrams a little bit simpler, we can try the condensed structural diagram versions or the line structural diagram. But notice in the line structural diagram how we have to write in the OH group, even though the carbons and the other hydrogens are not written in. The same is also true for the structural formula, where you will often see the OH group together at the end, even if there are other oxygen or hydrogen atoms in the molecule. And so why does any of this matter? Where do alcohols come into everyday life? Part four. Uses of alcohols, wow! Well, we already talked about 2-propanol and its use in hand sanitizer, but probably the most famous alcohol is ethanol. Ethanol is used in everything from fuels for vehicles to solvents for paints and perfumes, 
and it's also the alcohol in alcoholic beverages. There's even alcohols in places that you would never expect. Even something like cholesterol, which you see sometimes on nutrition facts and is an important part of your cell membranes. Because it ends in OL, we can infer that there's probably a hydroxyl group in there somewhere. And if we look at the structure of cholesterol, we can see it's a pretty complex molecule, but there's that hydroxyl group making it an alcohol. And funny story, I was brushing my teeth the other day and I noticed on my mouthwash that it's labeled as alcohol free. But then I looked at the list of ingredients and I saw thymol, menthol, and propylene glycol, all of which end in OL and all of which contain the hydroxyl group. So yes, this company has an alcohol-free mouthwash with alcohols in it. And so those are alcohols, organic molecules with the OH or hydroxyl group present in them. You can often identify alcohols by their name because they end in OL and they're used in everything from mouthwash to membranes to margaritas. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you learned something too. We'll see you next time on Science with Thomas.